got my hair yesterday and studied. Mm, okay, studying for the project. Yes. Okay. Um, was it productive? Yes, yes, really productive. Okay. And, uh, and actually, uh, yes. It's due on Monday, right? Tuesday. <laughs> oh, right. Tuesday is the ninth. At 2 p.m. <laughs> oh, okay. So you've got it down to the hour. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and did I interrupt you? Are you going to say something else? Uh, maybe. Because, well, today it was really a great day. I received a, a really great news, and so I'm happy. Nice. Congratulations. I'm happy about your good news. Um, yeah, if you feel like sharing, feel free to share. But um, if not, no worries. And AMP, how's it going? Hi, teacher. Doing well. What about you? Doing pretty well. Thanks. And how was your day? I'm um, doing well. Just I went to the supermarket in the morning and then I take a class. And now, I take a yeah. class? Yes, I took a class. Better. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's not Tuesday, so that's always good. Um, yeah, the uh, weekend is uh, holidays. It's carnival. Really? So, yeah, we have carnival oh, wow. on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. That's three days. Sweet. That's exciting. Um, lots of time for classes. Um. All right, and Ksenia. Yeah, no, I know. I'm to go to the beach. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that sounds nice. Um, the beach. What beach are you going to go to? Uh, we have a, a house in, in Playas that is uh, the nearest the nearest one. Nice. Sweet. That's awesome. Um, Ksenia, how's it going? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. Nice. I'm good to hear. And what have you been up to today? Mm. I read a lot of articles about healthy food and actually I decided to eat healthy food only beside one day a week. Nice. That's good. Um, those are always hard decisions um, to like carry out, I guess. Um, yes. But nice. That's definitely good. And... Um, nice. Yeah, all right. Uh, I guess what what consists of healthy foods? What kinds of healthy foods are you going to be eating? Uh, just simple food. Chicken breast, maybe some uh, meat without fat, fish, vegetables, fruits. Actually, everything that our ancestors uh, had to eat when they were wild. <laughs> Something okay. like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. That'll be good. That's definitely a good diet. Um, so just try to stay away from breads and stuff. Actually, I don't eat bread. You don't for eat bread? Ten, no, never. I haven't eaten bread for 10 years. I haven't eaten bread for 10 years. And then when I was a child, I didn't eat bread, I think. Oh, wow. I don't know what I would do without bread. But I like to eat uh, sometimes El uh, Elvis Presley sandwiches. It's like sandwich, white bread, then peanut butter and slices of bananas. <laughs> so you don't eat bread except for the Elvis Presley uh, sandwich? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Not every day, but maybe once a month I eat bread, of course. Nice. Okay. That sounds good. Um, those are delicious. It's been a long time since I actually had peanut butter. Um, I might buy some today. Uh, and Giudetta, so what happened? Um, coconut oil is good for your memory. Really? I didn't know that either. Um, mm. Farm of my family has been accepted as a partner. That's awesome. Congratulations, Giudetta. Um, That's Yeah, really, really cool. Okay, and... Gosh, why do I always freeze? Um, I uh, I can't start the class. So give me a second. I'll be right back. I'm sorry.
hey, you can fry with coconut oil. Um, yes, you can. All right. Uh, so ooh, I was thinking we would do Chicxulub again um, and try to get through it. I know we didn't get through it last time. And so, yeah, hopefully we could read it through. I think it was pretty much all of you guys. Um, yeah. Because this is a good story. Uh, let's have... Julieta, can you read the title and the first part? Text mm, My daughter is walking along the roadside late at night. Too late, really. Not for a 70 years old, 17 years old to be out alone. Even in a town as safe as, as this, and it is raining, the first rain of the season, the street, the streets slick with a fine, unmissable glaze of water and petro petrochemicals. Packages, a driver who hadn't to consume two apple martinis and three glasses of itching post Pinot Noir before she got behind the wheels of her car, would have trouble keeping the thing out of the gutters and the shrubbery off the sidewalk and the highway medium, for Christ's sake, but that's not really what I want to talk about, not or not yet, anyway. Have you heard of uh, Tungushka in Russia? Good. Um, off the sidewalk in the highway median, for Christ's sake. Off the sidewalk of the highway median, for Christ's sake. Good. Um, Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir. Good. Okay. Nan, welcome to class. How's it going? I'm I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay. Um, and yeah. Uh, so if you have questions, make sure you ask them in the chat box because this is a long story. Hopefully, we can get through it. Um, so yeah, questions in the chat box. Let's have Heidi. Can you read the next part? This was the site of the last known large body impact on the Earth's surface, nearly a hundred years ago. Or well, that not uh, strictly, uh, strictly accurate, the me me medal, which was an, uh, an estimated 60 years ago, near actually touched down the force of its uh, in entry, the compassion and the sub um, superheading of the air ben beneath it caused it to explode some 25,000 feet above the ground. But then uh, the term explode hardly does just just to event to the event. There was a, a detonation, a flash, a thunderclap with a, a combust combustive power of 800 Hiroshima bombs. 30 miles away, Reindeer in uh, their uh, lo loping hearts were st struck dead by the blast wave, and the cross of a hunter another 30 miles beyond that burst into flame even as he was uh, polixed to the ground. Mm. 700 a square miles of Siberian forests were uh, leveled in an instant. If the metal, metal had, uh, had struck just five hours later, it would have exploded over uh, St. Peter, Peterburg and uh, annihilated every living thing in the, that glorious Baroque city. Okay. Let's look at annihilated. 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 Yeah. Instead of saying annihe, it's annihe. Annihilated. Which is just destroyed. Then meteor. 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 
yeah, if the meteor had struck and then leveled. Can you repeat leveled? Leveled. Um, poleaxed. A poleaxed. A poleaxed, okay. A poleaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a long weapon with an axe at the tip, so he was like thrown to the ground with a lot of force. Uh, compression. Compression. And the meteor. Meteor. And the meteor. Uh, good. And let's have non. Again. Non, can you read the next part? Starting from, and this was only a rock. Okay, and this was only a rock, and it was only 60 yards across. My point, you'd better go down on your knees and pray to your gods, because every year this big spanning globe will right intersect it, the orbit of some 20 million asteroids. Road at least a thousand of which are more than half a mile in diameter. But my doctor, she's out there in the dark and the rain, walking home. Maureen and I bought her car, bought her car a Honda Civic. The safety thing on four wheels, but the car was used, pre-owned in dealer speak. And as it happens, it's in the shop with transmission problems and because she just had to see her friends and gossip and jiggle and balance slicks, multi-colored multi clubs of raw fish and pink ginger on cold jointed chopsticks at the mall. Kimberly picks her up, and Kim Barry will bring her home. Good. Okay, conjoined. Conjoined. Yeah, conjoined. Ginger. Ginger. Oh, ginger. Um, the safest. The safest. Uh, rain. Rain. Asteroids. 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 Always asteroids. Yeah. Intersects. Intersects. And the sp spinning. Oh, sp spin spinning. Spinning. Good. Okay. Again, ask the questions in the chat box so you don't take too much time. And Amp, can you read the next part? Your job, uh, and Senia? Was Senia right. there? No? Did we miss Senia? Okay. Um, yeah, Senia, sorry. I can't believe I missed you. I'm really sorry. Um, it's okay. Senia, can you read from Maddie? Um, Maddie has a cell phone, and theoretically, she could have called us, but, he did, but, sh but she didn't. Oh, that's how it appears. And so she's walking in the rain, and Alice Capet Roman of 16 Briar Lane, white, divorced, a realtor with Hyperion, who has picked at a salad and left her glasses on the bar, loses control of her ve vehicle. 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 Sorry. Going. It is just past midnight. I am in bed with a book, naked naked and hardly able to focus on the clustered words and rigid descending paragraphs because Maureen is in the bathroom slipping into the sheer black ne negligee. I bought her at Victoria's Secret for her birthday and her every sound the creak of the medicine cabinet on its hinges, the tap running, the sassars of the brush at her teeth electrifies me. I've lit a candle and I'm waiting for Maureen to step into the room so that I can flick off the light. He had cocktails earlier, we had cocktails earlier and a bottle of wine with dinner. 
and we set clothes on the couch and shared a joint in front of the fire. Because, because our daughter was out. What? I'm so sorry. Because our daughter was out and we could do that with no one there wiser. Good. Okay, let's look at cabinet. Cabinet. Cabinet and vehicle. Vehicle. Good. Okay. And hinges are the things that hold the door on the wall. So the thing that the door moves on, those are hinges. Um, yeah. And clustered is gathered closely together. Um, okay. Perfect. And... Yeah. Let's have... Okay, Ken, can you... Well, welcome to class. Can you read the next yes. part? Hello. Uh, because our daughter was out and we could do that do that with no one the wiser. Wiser. Uh, a wiser. And listen to the little sounds from the bathroom. Uh, seductive sounds. Maddening. I'm ready. More than ready. Hey, I call pitching my voice slow. Are you coming or not? You don't expect me to wait all night, do you? You can. Okay. Uh, her face uh, appears in the doorway. The pale knobs of her uh, breasts and the dark nipples are visible through the uh, clinging black silk. Oh, are you waiting for me? She says, making a game of it. She laughs at the door, and I can't see the smile creep across her lips. The pressure of the moment, drawing it out, because I thought I might go down and walk in the garden for a while. It won't take a long, take long, a couple hours, maybe. You know, spread a little man, uh, manure, ba back up some of the march on the roses. You wait for me, won't you? Last one. Uh, the the uh, the phone ring. Uh, then phone ring. Then the phone rings. <laughs> then the phone rings. Bank. Bank. Can you guys hear me? No. Yeah. I, I hear you. All right, Ken, can you repeat bank? Uh, bank. And manure? Manure. And hovers. Harbors. Yeah, hover is like a float. We have hovercrafts that, like, mm -hmm. because they have air blowing down, they kind of float on top of the ground. In this case, she's just, like, kind of standing without moving at the door. Mm -hmm. Um, mulch is mulch. like the wood chips that you put in a garden um, that make it look nice. So it's like a wood chip that kind of retains moisture in a garden. Uh, yeah. And good. Amp, can you read the next part? We stare blankly at each other through the first two rings and then Maureen says, I better get it, and I say no, no, forget it. It's nothing. It's nobody. But she is already moving. Forget it, I shout, and her voice drifts back to me. What if it's Maddie? Then I watch her, put her lips to the receiver, and whisper, "Hello." The night of the Tunguska explosion, the skies were unnaturally bright across Europe. As far uh, as far away as London, people stroll in the parks and pass midnight and read uh, no, um, and read novels out of doors. While the ship kept right of racing and the birds stirred uneasily in the trees, there were no stars visible, no moon, just a pale, quivering light, as if. Or as if all of the color had been bleached out uh, of the sky. Okay, 
Good. Can you repeat uneasily? Uneasily. Um, really well done. And Ken, I don't know if I told you this. If you have any questions, write them in the chat box uh, as we're reading. Judith, can you read the next part? Yes. Uh, but of course, that midnight glow and the, the fate of those unhappy Siberian re reindeer were nothing at all compared to what would have happened if a larger object had invaded the Earth's atmosphere. On average, objects greater than 100 yards in diameter strike the planet once every 5,000 years, and asteroids half a mile across thunder down at intervals of 300,000 years. 300,000 years is a long time in anybody's book, but if when such a collision occurs, the explosion will be in the million mega megaton range and will cloak the atmosphere in dust, thrusting the entire planet into a deep freeze and effectively, effectively shifting all part grow growth for a period of a year or more. There will be no crops, no forage, no sun. Keep going. Uh, there has been an accident. That is what the voice on the other hand of the line is telling my wife. And the, the victim is Madeline Lan on uh, 1337 Laurel Drive, according to the ID the paramedics found in the her purse. Good. Let's look at stifling. Stifling. Plant. All plant growth. All plant growth. Good. Other than that, it looked good. Um, so cloak is cover. So a cloak is kind of like a jacket, but it's a jacket that covers everything on you pretty much. Um, if you've ever read Harry Potter, he has an invisibility cloak. Um, and stifling is like suffocating. Um, so not allowing to breathe, not allowing to grow, not allowing to do something. So you can stifle your, your children uh, if you don't let them go out and play with their friends. Um, you can stifle somebody else's growth, stifle plant growth. Um, and forage is like go around and pick up nuts and berries and kind of like we have hunters and foragers. So a forager will go and find plant things to eat. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And let's have Heidi. Can you read the next part? From the purse. Why does this happen? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, from the purse. The purse with the silver glass that has been driven half an inch into the flesh under her arm by the force of the impact is a little thing, no bigger than a hard cover book with a ribbon and thin strap. The same parts all the girls carry, as if it were a part of a uniform. Is this her present or a guardian speaking? I hear my wife say, a uh, parent, uh, this her parent of, or guardian speaking. I hear my wife say, this is her mother. And then the button dropping out of her voice. Is she? Is she? Uh, they don't answer such questions. Don't volunteer information, not over the phone. The next ten, uh, ten seconds. Uh, a thunderous, a cut, uh, cut uh, My wife uh, standing here, number uh, with a phone in her hand, as if uh, it was uh, some un uh, in uh, un and I'm mean, sorry, some unidentifiable object. She's found in the street while I found out of bed to search for my pants and my shoes. Where yeah, are my shoes, the car keys, my wallet? This is a, a true panic. The loss of faith and control, 
the punch uh, to the heart and the struggle for the breath. Good. Okay, unidentifiable. Un unidentifiable. Good. Cataclysmic? Cataclysmic. Good. And volunteer? Volunteer. Yeah. Really well done. And so it doesn't look like anybody has any questions here. And Ksenia, can you read the next part? We'll go a little bit further. She was hit by a car? Yeah. No? Yes. Uh, so I, I say the only thing I can think to say just to hear my own voice, just to get things straight. She was in, she was in an ac accident. Is that what they said? She was hit by a car. She they don't know in surgery. What hospital? Did they say what hospital? My wife in emotion now to the negligent ridiculous and equal to the task and she jerks it over her head and flings it to the floor even as she snatches up the blows, shorts, flip flops, anything, anything to cover her nakedness and get her out the door. The dog is uh, whining in the mm -hmm. kitchen. There is a sound of rain on the roof, intensifying, hammering at the gutters. I don't bother. I don't bother with shoes. There are no shoes. Shoes do not exist. And my shirt hangs simply from my sh shoulders, misbuttoned, sagging, tails hanging loose. And we are in the car now, and the driver's side wiper is beating out of cinch and the night closing on on us like a first a feast but, uh, beating out of sync mm, uh, is beating out of sync yeah, so not in time with the other one limply 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 so it's without strength without stiffness um, it's like loosely um, negligee negligee And do, 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 do. Ken, can you read the next part? Yeah, and Chicks then. Uh, By the way, Chicxulub. Chicxulub, okay. And then there's Chicxulub 65 million years ago, an asteroid, uh, or perhaps a comet, no one is quite certain. Collide, collided with the Earth on what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. Judging from the impact crater, which is a hundred and twenty miles wide, the object, this big flaming ball, was some six miles across. When it came down, day became night, and that night extended so far into the future that. At least 75% of all known species were extinguished, including dinosaurs in nearly all uh, their forms and array and some 90% of the ocean's uh, plankton, which in turn devastated the, the pelagic food chain. How fast was it traveling? The nearest estimates put it at 54,000 miles an hour, more than 60 times the speed of the bullet. Astrophysical physicists call such objects civilization enders and calculate the chance that a disaster of this uh, magnitude will occur during any individual's lifetime at rally. One in ten thousand, the same as as dying in an old accident in the next uh, six months or more, uh, terribly, living to be a hundred in the company of your spouse. Auto accident. Uh, auto accident. Uh, roughly. Roughly. Oh, it. Oh, uh huh. And 
collided. Collided. Um, tellingly, it's um, like giving you more information or like, yeah, more helpfully. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, giving you more information, kind of. Um, Amp, can you read the next part? All I see is windows, an endless grid of lead windows climbing one about the other into the night. As the car shoots into the emergency vehicles only lane and slides in hard against the, the curb, both doors lying uh, clean, open simultaneously. Maureen is already out of the sidewalk, already slamming the door behind her and breaking into a trot. And I am right on her heels, the keys still in the ignition and the lights stabbing at the pale underbelly of a diagonally parked ambulance. And they can have the car. Anybody can have it and keep it forever. If they'll just tell me that my daughter is all right, just tell me. I'm mother out of breath. Just tell me. And it's yours. And this is a prayer, the first in a long discontinuous stream, addressed to whoever or whatever may be listening. Overhead, the sky is having a seizure, black above, quicksilver below. The rain coming down in wine blown, a uh, wine blown arcs, and I wouldn't even notice, but for the uh, fact, uh, for the fact uh, that we are suddenly, instantly wet, our hair knotted uh, and clinging, and our clothes stuck like flypaper to the slick segment of our skin. Okay, uh, our hair knotted and clinging. Uh, where? Our hair, our hair knotted, knotted and clinging. And our clothes stuck like flypaper to the slick tegument of our skin. Our clothes stuck like flypaper to the slick tegument of our skin. Like, tegument is just like a covering. I don't think I've ever seen that word anywhere else in anything. So don't feel like you have to memorize it. Um, so tegument could be clothes, could be your skin, just like a covering. Um, Fly paper is sticky paper that you hang from the ceiling that when flies land on, they cannot leave, and so you kill the flies if you have them in your house. Um, wind blown? Wind blown? Wind blown. Uh, seizure? Seizure. Diagonally? Uh, repeat, please. Diagonally? Diagonally. Simultaneously? Simultaneously. Simultaneously. Okay. Fling. Fling. Perfect. Okay. And. What is fling? Fling is throw. So, like, you fling, you throw it really quickly. Um, not much strength, but lots of speed. Um, Juliette, can you read the next part? In we come, side by side through the doors that jolt back from us in alarm. And all I can think is that the hospital is a dead, dead factory and that we have, to, to, we have come to it like the walking dead. Haggard, Salo, Shulas, my daughter, I say to the nurse at the admittance desk, she is, they called, you called, she has been in an accident. Maureen is at my side, tugging at the fingers of one hand, as if she were trying to remove an invisible globe. A car, a car accident. Name? The nurse asks. About this nurse. She's young, Filipina, with the pack eyes and uh, the bone structure of a cadaver. Every day she sees death and it's, uh, it blinds her. She doesn't see us. She, see a she sees a computer screen. She sees the TV monitor mounted in the corner and the shadows that pass there. She sees the walls, the floor, the naked light of the fluorescent tube, but not us, not us. 
uh, the bone structure of a cadaver. Cadaver. Mm -hmm. uh, opaque. Opaque. Um, do do do. Uh, is a death factory. Death fact. Death fact. Death factory. Death factory. Okay. Very <laughs> good. Death factory. Okay. And but she doesn't see us. And. Do, do, do. Heidi, can you read the next part? For one resounding moment, that thumps in my ears, and then thumps again. I can't remember my daughter's name. I can picture her leaning into the mound of textbooks spread out on the dining room table. The glow of the overhead light making a, a nymph of her hair as she glances up at the, uh, with a glam book, a glam look, I'm sorry, wait, 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 I, I lost. Uh, with a glam look and a half uh, uh, lo uh, rueful. rueful smile, as if to say, uh, it's all in a day's work for teenager. Dad, and you are lucky uh, you are not in the high school anymore. But her name is gone. Maddie. My wife said, um, Mad uh, Madeline and Bean. Bean, I'm not sure. Yeah, I Bean. Watch, mm -hmm. Go Madeline ahead. Bean. I watch Miss Miss Mesmerized and the nurse of, of fresh rest of fingers um, man maneuver, manu maneuver the mouth. Her eyes locked on the screen before her. A click, another click, click. The eyes lift to take us in. Even as they uh, ditch, uh, dodge, dodge away again, she's still in the surgery, she says. Where is it? I demand. What room? Where do, I, where do we go? Nurses. Nurses. A nimbus. Uh, nimbus. Good. Other than that, really well done. Uh, good corrections, too, with a few of those, like maneuver, mesmerized. Um, okay. And uh, Ksen, can you keep reading? Yes. Uh, Marine's voice cuts in then elemental chilling, and it's not a question she's posing, not a statement or demand, but a plea. What's wrong with her? Another click, but this one is just for sure, and the eyes never move from the screen. There was an accident, the nurse says. She was brought in by the paramedics. That's all I can tell you. Uh, it is then that I became aware that we are not alone, that there are other milling around the room, other zombies like ours, hardly dressed and steaming water till their beige carpet is black with it, and why, I wonder. Do I despise the nurse more than any human being I ever encountered? This young woman, not, not much older than my daughter, with her hair pulled back in a brown and white cap like a party favor perched atop it, who is just doing her job? Why do I want to reach across the counter? Um, the counter that separates us and awaken her to a swift, sure, sure knowledge of hate and fear and pain. Why? Ted Marine says, and I feel her grip at my elbow. And then we're moving again, hurrying, sweeping, particularly running out of this place, down a corridor under the glare of the lights that are kind of death in themselves, and into a worse place, a far worse place. Streaming. Steaming. Streaming. Streaming. Good. So the water is like falling down them. Perched is like sitting on top of, like perched, you're not really steady on something. Birds perch on branches. Um, so this hat is kind of like sitting on top of her head, but like really high on top, like a bird, kind of. Um, practically. Practically. Hold on. Uh, and Ken, next part. Okay, 
the thing that disturbs me about chick chick love, aside chick -love. from the fact Keep chick love, chick love, aside from the fact that is uh, that it erased the dinosaurs and robbed cat cat uh, catastrophic uh, and irreversible uh, change is the deeper implication that we and all our works and worries and attachments are so utterly inconsequential that cancels our individuality. We know that, yes, but uh, on to get Jenny, Jenny, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny and progeny and the kind goes on. Human life and culture succeed us. That in absence of God is what allows us to accept the death of individual. But when the when you throw chick love into the mix, uh, or the next uh, chick love, the chick love that could come bowling down to the obliterate all and everything, even as your eyes skim the lines of seeing this page. Where does that leave us? Uh, you are the partners, our parents. We are in another room, gone deeper now. The loudspeakers murmuring their eternal in 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 incantations. Dr. Chandra Soma to emergency. Dr. Bell uh, pausing. Dr. Bell. And here is another nurse, grimmer, older, with lines like the strings of a tobacco pouch pulled a tight around her lips. Paging Dr. Oh. Bell. Stop. Uh, yeah, uh, this is to stop. Paging Dr. Bell. Paging. Paging. Paging um, Dr. Bell. Obliterate. Uh, obliterate. Obliterate. Good, obliterate, which is just destroy. Ob Howling. Howling. Irreversible. 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 Good. Okay. So what he's talking about here is that people dying is miserable, but we're okay with it because we feel like we are contributing something to the human race. This idea that, you know, you're doing something with your life because there will be people after you who might be affected somewhat by you. You're continuing on the race, but when we have these like civilization enders like you're not contributing to anything that's not going to die as well so it's like saying that culture and life might not succeed us they might not go on um, a pouch is a little bag um, yeah a pouch is a little bag so a bag for tobacco um, and the tobacco butt no so this is like loose tobacco, so this is just the leaf. Um, so if you have a little bag with tobacco in it, you like have drawstrings that you can tighten, and her mouth has like those strings, those like lines around it, um, like they're meant to tighten the mouth. Um, okay, and let's have Amp. Can you read the next part? She is addressing us, me and my wife, but I have nothing to say, either in denial or affirmation. If I claim Maddie as my own, I'm making deals again. Then I'm sure to jinx her, uh, because those powers that might or might not be those gods of the in and the minute, uh, minute? Minute. Minute. 
uh, will see how desperately I love her and they'll take her hair away just to spite me from uh, for refusing to believe in them. Budu, Hudu, Santeria, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I hear Maureen's voice emerging from a locked vault, the single whisper, the monosyllable, and then, is she going to be all right? I don't have that information, the nurse says, and her voice is neutral, robotic even. This is not her daughter. Her daughter's at home, asleep in a pile of teddy bears, painting uh, pink sheets of fluffy pillow, uh, pillows, the night light glowing like the old seeing eye of a sentinel. I can't help myself. It is that uh, neutrality, that mechanical neutrality. And can't anybody take any responsibility for anything? What information do you have? I say, and maybe I am too loud. Maybe I am. Isn't that your job, for Christ's sake, to know what's going on here? Yeah, what information do you have? What I information say. do you have? Good. Um, really well done. And Judith, the next part. You call us up in the middle of the night. Our daughter is hurt. She's been in an accident, and you tell me, and you tell me you don't have any information. People turn their heads, eyes burn into eyes. They are slouched in origin plastic chairs, stretched out on, on the floor, praying, pacing, their lips moving in silence. They want information too. We all want information. We want news, good news. It was all a mistake. Minor cuts, on bruises, contusions. That's the word. And your daughter, son, husband, grandmother, first cousin, twice removed the will twice removed, will be walking through that door over there any minute. The North drills the nurse drills me with a look, and then she's coming out from behind the desk. A short woman, dumpy, almost a dwarf, and striding brisky to a door, which swings open on another door, another room. Deeper yet. If you'll just follow me, please, she says. Slowed. Slouched. Slouched. So when you sit Slouched. without sitting up straight, yeah. Um, uh, Heidi, the next part. Uh, suddenly, sheepish, I duck my head and uh, comply. Two steps behind Marie. This room is smaller, an examining room with a set of uh, scales and a chart on the world and each slab of a table covered with a sheet of antiseptic paper. Well, here, the nurse tells us, already shifting her weight to make her escape. The doctor will be in, the, uh, in, in a minute. What doctor? I, I want to know. What for? What does he want? But the door has already drawn closed. I turn to Maureen. She was standing there in the middle of the room, afraid to touch anything or to sit down or even to move for fear of break, breaking the spell. She's listening for footsteps, her eyes fixed on the door. I hear myself murmur, murmur her name. And then she's in my arm, sobbing. And I know I should hold her. Now, uh, now, uh, no, uh, now that uh, I, uh, uh, now that we both need it, the human contact, the love and the support. But all I feel is the burden of her. Good. Uh, know that we both need it, but that sounded good. Uh, Ksenia, can you keep going? There is nothing and no one can make this better. 
Can't you see that? I don't want to console or be consoled. I don't want to be touched. I just want my daughter back. Marine's voice comes from so deep in her throat, I can barely make out what she's saying. It takes a second to register, even as she pulls away from me. Her face crump crumpled and red, and this is her prayer whispered aloud. She's going to be alright, isn't she? Sure, I say. Sure she is. She'll be fine. She'll have some bruises, and for sure maybe a couple broken bones even. And I trail off trying to picture it, the crutches, the cast, the bad dates, the ghosts. Our daughter returned to us in a halo of shimmering light. Maybe she's broken her arm. She could break her arm. That would, or her leg, even her leg. But why would she be in a surgery? Why would she be in a surgery so long? Why? Why would it be? Good. Uh, register. Register? And okay, and Ken, can you keep reading? I don't have an answer to that. I don't want to have an answer. I was a car. Uh, Marie says a car. Ted, a car hit her. The room seems to kick and buzz with the fading energy of the ru rush uh, edge. Edifice, uh, edifice building, and I can't help thinking of the, the con conjuries of wires strung inside the walls, the cables, cables bringing power to the X-ray lab, the EKG and EEG machines, the life support systems, and of the myriad pipes and the fluid that they drain. A car, 3,000 pounds of a street from glass iron. What was she even doing walking like that? She knows better than that. My wife nods, the wet robes of her hair beating at her shoulders like the uh, flat flails of the pen, penitent. She probably had a fright, fight with Kimberley, or I'll bet that's it. Uh, I'll bet anything. Uh, where is the son of a bitch? Uh, I snarl. This doctor, where is he? Good. Where penitent. is he? Good. Penitence? Penitence? 3,000 pounds of steel. Uh, 3,000 3, pounds of steel. Good. Uh, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Julieta, can you keep going? Oh, Amp, can you keep going? Okay. We are in that room, in that purgatory of a room, for a good hour or more. Twice I think. I thrust my head out, out the door to give the nurse an annihilating. Annihilating. Look, annihilating look, but there is no news, no doctor, nothing. And then a uh, quarter past two, the inner two, uh, the inner door swings open, and there he is, a man too young to be a doctor, an infant with smooth, bland face and hair that writes a wave up off his brow, a brow, and he doesn't have to say a thing, not a word, because I can see what he's bringing us, and my heart sees with the shock of it. He looks uh, to Marine, looks to me then drops his eyes. I'm sorry, he says. And read the when, next half. Good. When it comes, uh, the, the meteor will punch uh, through the atmosphere and strike the Earth in the space of a single, uh, single second, vaporizing on impact and creating a fireball that will, uh, in that moment, achieve temperature of 60,000 degrees Kelvin, or 10 times the surface reading of the sun. Keep going. Okay. If it is, oops, chitla. <laughs> Good. 
size and it hit one of our land masses some uh, 200,000 cubic uh, kilometers of the Earth's surface will be thrust up into the atmosphere even as the thermal radiation of the blast set fire to the Earth, uh, cities and forest. Radiation. Radiation. Julieta? This will be succeeded by seismic and volcanic activity on a scale unknown in human, human history. And then the dark night of cosmic winter. If it should land in the sea, as the Chicxulub meteor did, it, it would spew superheat water into the atmosphere instead, extinguishing the light of the sun and triggering the same scenario of seismic catastrophe and eternal winter, while simultaneously sending out a ripping ring of water three miles high to rock the continents as if they were saucer in a dishpan. So, keep going. So, what does it matter? What does anything matter? We are powerless. We are bare feet. And bereft. the gods, mm, bereft. And the gods, all the gods, and all the ages combined are nothing but a rumor. Okay, let's look at seismic. Seismic. Uh, meteor. Meteor. Catastrophe. Catastrophe. And bereft is without. We are left without something. Um, so we don't have anything. Uh, gosh. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to finish. I have another class right after this. There's only a couple of cents. Mm -hmm. It's like a page and a half left. Um, mm -hmm. In the chat box, if you want to copy and paste that, that's the rest of the story. It's really short. You should read it because it's really good. Um, oh, wow. It's not even there. Um, with this new... Mm, it's called Chicxulub, and it's by T.C. Boyle, and you can find it online um, if you want to read it. It is in the chat, anyway. Yeah, it's not all of it, though, um, which, unfortunately, I don't even know where it ended. But I have another class right after this. Uh which is unfortunate. There'll be a new class. I'm going to put a new class in an hour. So if you guys want to come in an hour, it will be a new class. Good for you, for Heidi, who's already had it. Um, anyways, hopefully see you guys soon. Thanks. Okay. And, um, sure, take care. See ya.